Um, so now, uh, before going into our main event, which is the tutorial and hands-on labs, uh, Prem and I are going to give a brief introduction to the <laughs> language consortium, how p4.org is actually working, what you can do uh, to sort of, you know, make this a more flourishing environment very quickly. So, Prem, could you come up and give us a brief summary of sure. the language consortium? All right. Okay, uh, I'm uh, Prem Janalagada. I'm a product manager at uh, Barefoot Networks. Uh, also help out with uh, P4.org. So, what I'm going to do is kind of give you uh, a brief overview of where P4.org is, what's happening, some open source projects, um, things like that. So at the last uh, workshop in November, um, there were a total of 28 members, member organizations in P4. Uh, today we have 41. Uh, that's quite a bit of uh, growth. Uh, and, and more and more people um, are joining P4.org. So there were 23 industry members. Uh, today we have 34 from the industry. You can go to the website and take a look at who they are. Um, there were five academic uh, members. Uh, now, today we have seven. Uh, Virginia Tech was uh, the last one to join, like yesterday or something. So that's the, that's the lay of the land on how many members we have. So it's a growing uh, community, a lot of uh, interest from across the board networking systems, um, chip makers, software makers, everybody. So now, just want to highlight a few P4 integrations that have happened. Um, one is with OpenSwitch. I don't know if you're familiar with OpenSwitch. It's a fully open source uh, network operating system. Um, so OpenSwitch now has a P4 data plane. Uh, it's right now running as a simulation uh, switch the P4 data plane. It's also integrated with Sonic. Sonic is another uh, NOS uh, put out by Microsoft. So Sonic also has a P4 data plane integrated in it. Um, FBOSS. FBOSS is uh, uh, another NOS agent put out by Facebook that also has integration with P4, and actually tomorrow at the workshop you'll be able to see all of these three being demonstrated. Um, so all these software, all these control planes run on a program called switch.p4. This is the most popular uh, data plane program out there. It's a full featured L2L3 switch. Um, it's fully open source. You can take a look at it, it's on GitHub. So this program has uh, multiple APIs. Uh, these are all open APIs. Switch API is um, a high-level API, uh, more SDK-like. This is already available, fully open sourced, and you can use this to write your control plane software on. Switch link, this is a Netlink listener. So if you are uh, using kernel utilities, you can use switch link APIs. Um, to run your control plane. You can use any of the Linux kernel um, utilities to do this. Switch SAI or Switch SAI, this is also another shim layer between SAI API, which is uh, industry uh, standard switch abstraction interface API being uh, defined at OCP, led by Microsoft, Dell, and others. So there's also a SAI adaptation layer for Switch.p4. So you have multiple API options, completely open source data plane. You can take this, modify it, you know, add features, delete features, uh, do anything you want. And as you're developing applications with switch.p4 and these APIs, there's also something called packet test framework. So you can actually use this framework to instantiate multiple in instances of the P4 soft switch and uh, you know, use Mininet to in create hosts, you know, send traffic, do, do all your testing on, on servers. 
A uh, few notable applications of uh, programmable data plane. One is called in-band network telemetry. Uh, it's fully open source. The spec is on p4.org. It allows you to embed metadata from the data plane into any of the, the data packets and uh, send them out to a remote collector. Quite powerful. One of the applications of uh, in-band network telemetry is path and latency tracking. There's the talk on this uh, tomorrow at the workshop. Things like layer four load balancing are also possible with uh, you know, programmable data planes. There's a talk on this uh, also tomorrow. There's even an open flow agent on top of a P4 uh, data plane. Uh, so quite, quite a few of these applications, a lot of people working on this. So quite exciting, actually. Talking about different Targets, there's a P4 to eBPF compiler out there. So you can write P4 code, generate eBPF code out of it. Um, P4 to OVS, uh, there's actually going to be a talk on that today. I think uh, Shabazz and, uh, is going to give it. P4 to BMV2, this is a behavioral model. It's a software simulation model for um, P4 programs. So this is also completely available open source. So you have multiple compiler targets available. You have multiple applications being written with P4 uh, data plane. Uh, so quite a growing and healthy ecosystem um, developing around P4. So P4 has been in a couple of places. Uh, there was a P4 talk at ODL Mini Summit um, a few months ago. It was also featured at OpenStack Summit uh, in the talk talking about policy rendering with programmable data plane. So P4 was featured there. A few upcoming things. Uh, P4 paper has been submitted at CCF. This is China Computer Federation. Um, it's in the process of being accepted. And just in case, if you don't feel like uh, you got everything in the tutorial today, there's another full day tutorial in SIGCOM in Brazil. So you'll have to go to Brazil, but uh, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, and, in the, and it's located in a place where there's no Zika virus, right? So that's what I heard. So it, it moved. So, so lots of activities, um, you know, lots of people working on this, real applications being built. Um, lots of momentum. So you're in the right place learning how to program in P4. This will, this will change networking uh, forever. So with that, I'll hand it over to Chang. OK, I just wanted to set the stage for the day. Um, so you all have this flyer showing today's schedule. You can also visit this SCAD page to get the full details. Um, Let's just quickly go through the agenda here. So right after my talk, we'll start the tutorial session. Um, we're, we're essentially going to give a lecture style uh, talks led by many uh, you know, P4 contributors, active contributor companies. Um, so Barefoot, uh, Xilinx, Netronom, and VMware, uh, we all put together these efforts to come up with this education material so we'll run this for about an hour and a half. Uh, so you'll be able to get most of the key concepts in P4 so that you can start actually uh, to look into P4 code, especially switch.p4 and understand it, you know, what these constructs mean. And then even you know, start to you know, modify switch.p4 to some extent. And then after the break, uh, a, a short break, uh, we'll have uh, a P4 demo session. Uh, so four companies, uh, Intel, Barefoot, Netronom, uh, actually three companies and one uh, academic group uh, from Princeton and Stanford will uh, give a demo of their own uh, P4 use cases. And then um, the next session, we're, we're going to look at the P4 mappings. So P4 is designed to be target independent and therefore, if you have different types of targets, the, there has to be you know, the compilation and mapping process. And, and part of that compilation process is by nature is going to be target dependent. Right? So that's a, a, a very important and you know, 
rather complicated task, but something that can be doable if you have the right set of you know, experts who understand the targets as well as the language. So we felt that understanding how you know, high-level P4 language instances or programs are actually translated down to different targets in a slightly different format might be useful for us to understand how the P4 actually works end-to-end. -end. So we'll have that session, uh, but that session is broken into two small pieces. So we'll have lunch in between. And then uh, we'll have the main highlight, uh, the hands-on lab session. So we have uh, two lab sessions. Uh, the second part is a typo, it's part two. So the first session, uh, the first hands-on lab session will be led by uh, Antonin and Vladimir Grevich, uh, where we're going to show how you can use BMB2, Behavioral Model Version 2, which is the software P4 switch uh, built you know, from scratch by the, uh, the P4 Language Consortium. So you will use that as a backend target and then program it using P4 and then implement an interesting feature on top of that. And then second hands-on hands lab session, you will actually be able to use real hardware target provided by Netronome. Uh, okay. And then finally, we'll have a brief uh, panel discussion uh, to talk about the future of P4 and, and why this is actually very relevant and important for them. Um, okay, so that's today's full schedule. Okay, and then let me briefly talk about the language consortium. So we have, you know, several mailing lists: P4 discuss, P4 design, P4 announce. Anybody can join that mailing list without any commitment. It's fully open. You can suggest any, you know, uh, feedbacks or recommendations there, or ask questions there. It's very actively. They're all very actively used. Especially P4 Dev is very active these days. Um, and on top of that, we have working groups. Right now, we have one main working group, P4 Language Design Working Group, and Gordon and me, myself, are co-chairing that working group. Um, we are thinking of introducing two more working groups soon, so Standard Architecture Definition Working Group and API Auto Generation Working Group. You will soon get to know why these working, two more additional working groups matter. Um, hopefully by end of today, and uh, we're you know, looking for uh, active participants, especially co-chairs who are willing to lead these kind of act you know, activities. Okay. Um, unlike mailing list, if you want to join these working group meetings, by the way, these working group meetings are done by WebEx or just any you know, uh, you know, teleconference tools, so you don't need to worry about your geolocation. You can join it uh, conveniently from anywhere. Uh, we actually have very good turnout on our regular P4 language design working groups. So we wish you could you know, consider joining these kind of activities. But to join these working group activities, you have to be uh, a, you know, either an individual member or you, know, working, you have to be working for a, a member organization. That's because we wanted to get contributions mainly from the members, otherwise we cannot protect all of the participants well enough. Okay, so um, I'll share this slide uh, by email again. To prepare for the hands-on labs, uh, two hands-on lab sessions. For the first one, um, we have handed out the thumb drive, USB thumb drive, which contains a fully packaged self-contained VM image. So you just need to import it uh, using your own you know, popular virtualization tools such as uh, VirtualBox or Parallels, I believe, can also work. Um, so this is the instruction to import that and then make sure that you actually have a, a working environment for that. Again, I'll share this with you so you can just quickly import and then check whether you have the right setup or not. Um, maybe one missing thing is that you might just probably want to do this uh, sudo get at Python YAML, but um, that's very easy. And then you can also check whether your VM is working correctly or not. But uh, I recommend that you do this you know, uh, pre-installation before you know, the, the actual hands-on lab session because we have relatively small amount of time for the actual lab. So if we can actually compress this you know, initialization and set up things and then do it before, it would be much better. And then if you actually run into any problems regarding this setup, please feel free to talk to Antonin and Vladimir. Antonin and Vladimir, could you, you know, show your hands and then let us know where you are and 
how they can find you. So that's Antonin, and this is Vladimir, who can help you on the VM setup. Okay. Uh, you can yeah. Okay. I'll anyway send this out by email to every to every participant. And then the the second hands-on lab session, Netronome's net lab session, you just need a uh, you know remote desktop capability. So if you're running Windows, you're already covered. If you're running Mac, you just need to download this uh, desktop client. Uh, if you're Linux users, um, use any RDP client. And if you run into any problems, you can contact Bapi. Uh, Bapi, where are you? Okay, Bapi is there, so he can help you set up your environment if you run into any problems. Okay, so that's it. Any questions? Great, so let's get started. Um, Vladimir, are you starting? Yes, I am. Okay, great. Please come up. <laughs> 